Did you know that after starting a hair loss treatment, up to 20% of people will experience an increase in hair shedding. This is clinically confirmed with minoxidil and anecdotally reported all the time with finasteride, dutasteride, spironolactone, and even oral contraceptives. In some cases, the shedding is so severe, it causes people to quit. They think they're making their hair loss worse, not better. Paradoxically, Minoxidil and finasteride are FDA approved drugs for hair loss in men. So what is going on? If these things are supposed to regrow hair, why are they causing so much hair shedding? From a scientific perspective, the answer is fascinating. And in this video, we are going to dive into the science behind what's known as treatment induced shedding, why it's not always a bad sign, and we're gonna give you some tools to distinguish positive shedding from negative shedding. That is all coming up. If you've recently started a hair loss treatment and all of a sudden you're noticing a lot of hair fall, it's normal to panic and think that what you are doing is hurting, not helping. If this is your situation, then your prescribing doctor or dermatologist did not properly explain how hair loss treatments work. And now you might be at risk of withdrawing from something that's actually probably helping you. That's why we're making this video. We're gonna dive into the science behind these treatments, how they work, how treatment-induced hair shedding shouldn't scare you, and why it might even be necessary to achieve bigger hair gains. Minoxidil, finasteride, dutasteride, oral contraceptives, and spironolactone, these are commonly used treatments for androgenic alopecia, also known as male and female pattern hair loss. For a deep dive into this hair loss type, its causes and diagnostic criteria, check out our video on what causes hair loss, check out our video on how to diagnose hair loss disorders. I'll also link some guides for this information below. While these treatments do work differently, they all tend to target causes that contribute to the balding process. Minoxidil grows new blood vessels and reduces inflammatory markers. Finasteride and dutasteride help lower DHT levels. Spironolactone and oral contraceptives help to lower testosterone and DHT. And all of these actions improve the environment of our scalp. It reduces factors hurting hair growth. It improves factors helping hair growth. Now histological or structural changes to the scalp, like growing new blood vessel networks. That can take weeks to months of time to do. But the biological impact of these drugs, it's almost always immediate. Pharmacokinetic studies show that just minutes to hours after starting minoxidil or finasteride, scalp vasodilation improves, scalp DHT already starts going down. And within just days, plasma concentrations of these treatments, they tend to stabilize and their effects are exerted at maximal levels in our scalp environment. So, in effect, starting these treatments is sort of like flipping on a biological light switch. They get to work and they get to work quickly. After flipping this light switch on, our hair follicles are going to sense a change in their environment. And this realization from our follicles can trigger a chain reaction of events that results in hair shedding. And if you do not anticipate it, it can feel terrifying, but it shouldn't. And to explain why, we first have to understand a little bit more about our hair cycle, what it is, how it works, how pattern hair loss advances, and how hairs can actually regrow. Our hair is constantly cycling through a state of growing, resting, shedding, and repeating over and over and over again. In a healthy scalp, most hairs will grow for two to seven years, at which point they'll then shed, the follicle will degenerate, and a new follicle regenerates to take its place. And then that cycle repeats. At any given time, it's normal for 10 to 15% of our hairs to be in that shedding stage. And this is why we can lose up to 150 hairs per day even without a hair loss problem. These hairs are always shedding, but they're also always getting replaced. Pattern hair loss advances in part through something called hair follicle miniaturization. This is when the individual strands of hair, they get smaller and smaller and smaller over time until they're so thin and so wispy that we can barely see them at all. Fascinatingly, this process, it doesn't actually happen as our hair is actively growing. With pattern hair loss, if you shed some hair and you measure the tip of those hairs versus the root, you'll see 
The tip and the root are the same diameter, they're the same thickness. So when does this hair thinning actually take place? It takes place in between hair cycles. In androgenic alopecia, each time an affected hair sheds, when a new hair follicle then begins to regenerate underneath it, hormones and growth factors damage the base of that hair follicle. This then causes a smaller hair follicle to form, which produces a smaller hair strand than the last hair cycle. That hair grows out, and when it eventually sheds, this process repeats. The new hair follicle forms, that one is even smaller than the last cycle, and the hair is even thinner than last time. Eventually, this process resolves to the point where hairs are so thin they turn vellus, or white, and you can barely see them. And that's when you end up with a scalp that looks like this, or like this. So now that we have this base understanding of one way in which androgenic alopecia can advance and how hair cycling and hair thinning works, let's revisit that situation where you just started treatment and you flipped on one of those biological light switches in your scalp and now you're noticing a lot of shedding. So what is happening here? First, is that our hair follicles are actually sensing an opportunity to resize. With favorable changes to scalp hormones and proteins, hair follicles will sense a healthier environment. And when this happens, they can take an opportunity to resize as bigger. And how do hair follicles resize? Well, they don't just start growing thicker. They need a better foundation. They need a bigger hair follicle itself to produce a thicker hair strand. And the way to get a bigger hair follicle is to degenerate the old hair follicle so that a new one can take its place and resize. And what triggers that process? Hair shedding. Now, here's a major difference between shedding hair on treatment versus off treatment. When you are on treatment, the hormones and proteins governing that process of miniaturization they're no longer present at significant levels to damage newly forming hair follicles. Under these circumstances, when a hair sheds, that newly forming hair follicle, it's not going to succumb to so much or as much damage when it's forming. So it actually has an opportunity to regenerate as larger in that next hair cycle. Larger hair follicles produce thicker hair strands, which leads to better looking hair. Basically, Initiating an effective treatment is kind of like initiating hair follicle miniaturization in reverse. And it's for this very reason that it can take drugs like finasteride up to 24 months, that's two full years, to produce peak results. In androgenic alopecia, hair cycles, they're accelerated a bit, but they still take months to years to complete. So affected hairs that are now under treatment, they might need to undergo a series of hair cycles to keep resizing as bigger and bigger and bigger. So that is the first reason why you might start treatment and if it's effective, you might start shedding a little bit more hair and that's okay. It can feel really scary until you realize your hair follicles are actually taking an opportunity to grow in as larger. But there is another reason why this hair shedding happens. The second is that our hair cycles are now becoming more synchronized. Did you know that in some mammals, like certain mice, nearly all of their hair is growing or shedding at the exact same time? If you have a dog, you've probably noticed some mild variant of this, where their shedding can pick up dramatically during spring so that their coats can thin out for the summertime. This phenomenon is a form of hair cycle synchronization. And while humans can experience subtle synchronization through shedding rates during the year, for the most part, we are relatively immune to these mass shedding events that we see in other mammals. In other words, all of our hair follicles are sort of following their own independent schedules, growing and shedding in no relation to their neighboring hair follicles. That is, until you start an effective hair loss treatment. In androgenic alopecia, our percent of telogen or shedding hairs can move from about 10 to 15%, which is normal, all the way up to 30% or higher. So you start shedding more hair more frequently and that starts resolving into hair follicle miniaturization. But when you start an effective hair loss treatment and that relatively larger proportion of shedding hairs sense that opportunity to resize all at the same time, your scalp now can go through episodes of hair cycle synchronization, just like a dog before summer or a mouse in its early months of life. Your hair cycles synchronize. Only for you, 
it's the result of a favorable scalp environmental change. And again, with these favorable changes, these sheds should stop resolving into hair follicle miniaturization and start resolving into stabilization or better, stronger, thicker hair in future hair cycles. So this is a really common phenomenon during the first three months of treatment for people. It often results in a temporary hair shedding event. It's called treatment-induced telogen effluvium, and this shedding can look and feel alarming unless you know what it means. Your hair loss treatment is probably working and those hairs should come back bigger and better. It's these two effects, hair follicle resizing and hair cycle synchronization, that explain why up to 20% of people starting minoxidil report this increase in hair shedding in the first one to three months. In fact, these synchronized sheds they can also happen in following hair cycles, even months to years after starting treatment. Now, the longer that you use these treatments, the less synchronized those hair cycles will become and the less you'll have to worry about bouts of dramatic hair shedding. Nonetheless, they can still happen and they don't necessarily mean anything bad. In many cases, they mean something good. So if you have just started treatment, do not fear the shed. In almost all cases, it is a sign of bigger and better things to come. So that covers hair shedding after starting commonly prescribed, well-studied hair loss treatments. But what about hair shedding after starting lesser studied, more experimental interventions like stem cell injections, PRP, exosomes, microneedling, massaging? First, these interventions, they all fall under a class of treatments that trigger acute inflammation. These wound healing responses then elicit growth factors and proteins that might encourage hair growth. And that's one way in which they're believed to work. For more information, see our literature review on microneedling. We made a video about it, which I'll link below. So should we treat hair shedding after starting wound healing therapies the same as shedding from starting finasteride or minoxidil? Unfortunately, there is Little to no data here, so we have very little clarity. On the one hand, small studies suggest that these things might also initiate mild hair shedding and that those hairs will return in later months with better, more robust hair growth. On the other hand, these therapies, they also evoke inflammation. A little inflammation might be beneficial to hair growth, while too much inflammation might be problematic. So if you're trying these things and noticing increased shedding, is that a sign of hair growth to come? Or is it an indication that your scalp isn't handling the intervention itself very well? This is harder to tell than you might think. And in my opinion, until more studies are published, it's probably best to use the following rule of thumb for any therapy, including acute wounding protocols. Slight upticks in hair shedding are probably normal and they're probably temporary, just as we'd expect from better studied hair loss treatments. However, I don't think this hair shedding should ever lead to cosmetic decreases in hair density. If you are experiencing a severe shed from these therapies, I recommend that you stop and evaluate the following. Do you have underlying scalp inflammation? For instance, seborrheic dermatitis, which may become further agitated after microneedling sessions. Do you have hair loss types aside from androgenic alopecia? Telogen effluvium, alopecia areata, scarring alopecias, because those things are not as well studied for those types of therapies. Are you going too hard with your therapies? So microneedling too frequently, too deeply, massaging too aggressively, spacing your PRP sessions mere days apart to not allow for enough wound healing time. If any of these factors are present, it's probably best to address those prior to reinitiating any experimental therapy. In fact, those first two factors are critical for anybody fighting hair loss, regardless of your treatment approach. You need to understand if you have scalp inflammation. You need to also know what your hair loss diagnosis is. We have videos on this, check them out, and we have more coming up. Lastly, in almost all cases, multi-targeting your hair loss is going to be better than mono-targeting. The more angles of attack, the better your outcomes, especially when you're leveraging key treatment targets at effective doses or efforts. To learn more, watch our video on how to fix hair loss in men at home. All right, that does it for now. You now have a framework for understanding treatment-induced hair shedding, what causes it, why it's almost always a good sign, and the circumstances in which you might wanna do more troubleshooting. Thank you again. If you have any video requests, let me know. We'll see you next time.